Good day and welcome to this week's episode of Strictly Legal on WESN Content Capital. I am your host, Rondell Dono, attorney at law. And once again, I'm happy to be here. Once again, I'm happy to bring the law and you. Of course, you can stream us on our World Wide Web at WESNCC.com as well as traditional media. Also, you can catch us at Strictly Legal with Rondell Dono podcast. Now, today, I am, of course, always excited, but we are introducing to Strictly Legal a new segment called Legal Lingo. And basically, this is where each week we will put forward a legal term and we will present this to you in terms of a context of whatever matter we are about to discuss. So let's begin. Today on Legal Lingo, we will discuss the word provocation. Now, provocation is causing someone to lose their self-control by doing or saying something, let's say, for example, such as threatening to harm a baby, which would cause a reasonable person to temporarily lose their self-control. Let's use the word provocation in context. A man, in his, in his defense, has indicated that he committed the offense because the person provoked him. And therefore, he said that that's provocation. So as you see, I use that in a phrase. And of course, we'll be discussing that further. So here you have it, legal lingo on Strictly Legal, WESN Content Capital. We'll be right back. This is Face of Sports, WESN Content Capital. How you felt about the case on the lip? That's the business, I'm not dealing with that. I like, I find that was a distasteful. The national senior team, whether you like it or not, that is the model for all other teams to follow. I'm assuming that the regional requirement may be a much stricter requirement. This is not about Pro League and Super League. This is a league run by the normalization committee that I'm responsible for. Nobody expected FIFA to fund this arrangement. If we don't get a professional attitude towards this, we are doomed for failure. You break, break a balance, trip the leg, control the body. They ain't gonna stand put forever. Why you want the Chiefs to lose so? Why you want the Chiefs to lose so? They already have two, Lamar Why? Omar. You're jealous because you know the Chiefs getting closer to the Patriots. Let's go, let's go to the last part no, of the Let's go to the last part. Welcome back to Strictly Legal, where we will be discussing today a very, very important and provoking topic that deals with the controversy of intimate partner violence. Of course, in the context of self-defense or provocation. Uh, and of course, we have no stranger to Strictly Legal, uh, Mr. Daniel Ishmael Khan, who of course is an experienced criminal defense attorney, as well as he was a former inspector of prisons. And he's here to speak on the topic today, breaking point, yeah? Uh, welcome, 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 Daniel. The controversy of provocation in intimate partner violence. Welcome once again. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Donna Juan. Thank you for inviting me to discuss this topic of provocation. I watched your last show on the case of Elsie and her situation, and it really raised important issues about the law. Um, you know, the, the lingo, we would say, a man provoked me. I was provoked. And we talk about loss of self-control, which is very common in Trinidad in the papers. We're reading about all these murders, men committing against women, and then many of them taking their own lives. And I think it's a very important uh, public issue to discuss on this uh, matter. Of course, and as you indicated, you know, in this mini-series in terms of exploring um, uh, domestic violence or rather gender-based violence, on the last occasion we would have discussed where um, uh, the wife of, 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 of uh, well, her deceased husband now, uh, she used um, self-defense 
at a, at a point in time, and this is why the murder was committed, um, not intentionally, yes. uh, but of course because she was provoked, yes. or rather uh, she was abused on multiple occasions, and then that night in question, or that morning in question, uh, because of the severity of the abuse, uh, she had no choice but to, to, um, to do the act. Yes, and, and, and anyone who watches show, I would suggest watch your show, um, it speaks to the issue of reform. Here was an abused woman um, over many years and um, were documented reports at the police station and then one day um, she acted in self-defense but her stab wounds were so many. She inflicted more than 15 stab wounds on the deceased and therefore uh, one could argue perhaps it wasn't self-defense and she had to rely on provocation Provocation is a partial defense to murder, which reduces murder to manslaughter. Thankfully, she was allowed time served and she came out. She is out. Um, she's in the free world, but the law itself poses many, many problems. So, so let's, uh, as we're on that discussion, let's, let's talk about the evolution of the, the term or the defense of, of provocation. Yes. Um, particularly in today's context. Yes. Well, uh, for us lawyers, the word common law is a, is, is a phrase we're used to. Common law is judge-made law. You won't find it in the legislation. It wasn't passed in Parliament. Um, murder is a common law offense. We've had it for centuries. The English had it, and we imported it uh, through our development of law. Uh, the partial defense of provocation was imported in our common law, but it's developed in Scotland. And what it meant to do was mitigate the harshness of the penalty of murder, which then, and well, still is in Trinidad, but then in England, was the death sentence. And it was called a concession to human frailty, because we are humans. Uh, and as I said before, a, a murder can occur in infinite circumstances. But the concession the law developed, judge-made law, common law, because of human frailty, because we all lose our temper, uh, we will, we will diminish the murder charge to a manslaughter charge uh, based on the partial defense of provocation, unlike self-defense. Self-defense is a complete defense. You're charged with murder. If the jury or the fact finder accepts self-defense, not guilty. If, you, if the jury or the fact finders agree with your partial defense of provocation, you're found not guilty of murder, guilty of manslaughter. And um, provocation developed to mitigate the death sentence and, and and therefore is it is it that um of course the partial defense of provocation has been there for centuries it has been there mm -hmm. for centuries um in my research uh in 2009 it changed in the uk by statute they call it loss of self-control um i'll return to that in a little while and currently uh although many commonwealth jurisdictions have the partial defense of provocation the only two jurisdictions that rarely have it are Trinidad and, for my research, Hong Kong. Um, wow. and, if, and, the, and the partial defense of, Hong, of, of provocation arises very, very often in spousal killings, intimate pattern um, violence. Because we all know, um, I wouldn't say romance is a heated thing. Uh, you argue, you know, and then uh, the loss of self-control can come up, and we see in the papers it comes up, and fatally comes up, as, as your topic says. And um, it's to be examined because we don't want a society that excuses people for losing their self-control and killing. Yes. And um, we want a society where uh, each gender is equal. And often, uh, the five cases I will discuss that I was in over my 15 years, um, it is men killing their exes post end of the relationship. So it is intertwined with the human frailty, but it also um, it needs reform. And of course, as you mentioned, um, and, and, and I was getting to there in terms of uh, you representing five men throughout yes. a period of a couple of years, yes. who has all have different facts, but are the ultimately the similar circumstances. Yes, yes. And, um, and this is a discussion that I would like us to go through in terms of exploring um, the different facets or the different facts and what the court took into consideration, whether or not the court actually um, decided to acquit yes. by virtue of a jury, or um, whether the jury decided to acquit um, someone or one of any of your clients based on that defense or yes. based on whatever intricacies or in law that may have um, that may have a, a, arisen 
um, throughout the process of the trial. Yes. Um, what, what, what is your take in terms of how do you wish to, to proceed with it? Well, with, uh, with chronologically, I think it's important. Um, if I could take uh, your viewers and you through the first case, uh, Rame Sunanine, it was decided in November 2006. Uh, this was a prisoner that was committed for a murder of his ex-girlfriend and pled guilty to manslaughter on the basis of provocation and was sentenced to time served, which was about three years. Um, but this was, a, uh, from reading the, the case, this was a very interesting case in terms of um, he was in a, well, a relationship with this, yes. with this person. Um, they, uh, they, when they got exchanged. I believe that they had... Uh, a, a, a son it was together. his son. It wasn't his. Was it, is, it wasn't his. his. So yes. if, if you can just let's walk us through the facts. Yes. Uh, in terms of what <coughs> really happened. Um, uh, yeah. Permit me to uh, read, because I don't want to get anything. So uh, the prisoner was in a relationship with the deceased. Mm -hmm. uh, he had two children from a previous relationship, and one day the. Um, the deceased picked up the prisoner's son and inflicted serious violence on him. Um, it is alleged she tied his hands onto the car's headrest, behind his head with one side of his shoelaces, tied his neck with the other shoelace, and cuffed him on his abdominal area and telling she's fed up with him. She stopped the car on a dirt road and beat the child in his head and hands with a wheel spanner. The child was eventually dumped onto a pile of rubbish which included chicken and trails and she drove off. How that, old was the child? That child was about 10. Oh, wow. Yeah. But what would have caused an adult um, to be so fed up with a child well, to do that extremely it, cruel act? It, 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 they never got into it. She was charged for attempted murder of that young boy. And later on, um, after the incident, her and the prisoner meet, and they start to talk, and she brings it up. She brings up the incident. This is the first time. This is according to him. And um, he relies on the partial defense of provocation. He said when she brought it up, um, he just saw the image of his, of his, of his child, mm -hmm. uh, brattered and bruised, and he grabbed on her, her neck and strangled her till she died. Um, he put her body in the car and drove her on the bus route aimlessly and end up going to the police station, turning himself in, confessing fully to it. Now, he has killed a person. Yeah. That, that is murder. Yeah. No one else was around. No one else can say the circumstances. He confesses to what he did. There's obviously the factual history that she has been charged for attempted murder. Yeah. So that is something that you know, corroborates what he is saying. Uh, there's no bail for murder. It's about four years. You go through the PI. He gets to the high court. Uh, we write, I had just become an attorney. This is why it's so, uh, I became an attorney in September 2006, and I got the case in November 2006, obviously under the guidance of mm -hmm. Heather Chamber Senior Counsel. And uh, he pled guilty to manslaughter. On, 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 with the DPP accepted that, and the judge gave him time served. Now, any person... And, and, and if you could explain just to the viewers and listeners, yes. in terms of, in terms of what, what, what is time served? Well. Uh, okay, murder carries a death sentence, mandatory, and then manslaughter will carry as much as life. Mm -hmm. But you can get a term of years depending on... Um, so he was in jail for about four years, and the judge looking at the mitigating factors, those are serious provocative acts. Any reasonable person could say, harming my child, your, your um, legal lingo, and the example was a harm to my child. That is a natural human instinct. You harm my child, I'm going to you know, lose my control, yeah. my emotions and all that. And um, the judge thought, uh, based on the facts that the severity of the provocative provo acts towards him, the fact that he confessed, the fact that he has pled guilty, that the four years would have suffered, uh, would have satisfied the principles of sentencing. And um, that is one case you hear many, you'll hear any time I talk about it, common people saying, well, I accept that. And, 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 then, and then how much time served? Um, uh, he, he was waiting for four years. So he, uh, they said the four years that he was in custody would satisfy, and he was allowed to go um, after he pled guilty. Now, now you mentioned that somewhere in your, in your, in your submissions, yes. you mentioned that this attack was um, spontaneous. It lacked yes. premeditation. Yes. Uh, but, but 
what 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 is the circumstances that you are that 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 arose um, to state that it wasn't premeditated, despite the fact that he remembered what would have occurred. Uh, he, they had a discussion, and then immediately uh, he yes. strangled. Well, that that is the essence of the question because murder is a is a contemplation and intention. Um, the concession to human frail, frailty for the partial defense of provocation deals with a sudden and temporary loss of self-control. And that is why we're giving you a manslaughter, because it was sudden and temporary. You can't rely on provocation, the partial defense, and you provoke for a month. That is premeditated. Yes. So it's because of, um, well, in, I mean, I, it's hard to judge a man, you know, in this circumstance. But he met up with the lady after the incident. And she said, uh, according to him, he brings up the act. So the spontaneity of the, the incident is she bringing up the act. And um, that is how he was able, and the, and the DPP accepted um, based on the confession and, and the various facts that you could rely on. And he pled guilty, there was no trial. He pled guilty and he was sentenced. And this was in um, 2006. Um, so he's basically a free man? Uh, he was out at the time, yes. Yes. No, no, no. Of course, you know this is this is obviously uh, a sensitive situation. Very. Um, in that, uh, whereas yes, we are discussing persons who committed murder. Um, many viewers or listeners may be of the view that okay, this comes as though you are desensitizing or you are accepting murder. Yes. By time serve of nine years, eight yes. years, and whether or not that is indeed just to for human life to be lost and having to now serve little to no time uh, yes um, the aims of punishment require uh, retribution and denunciation meaning by our sentence we are making the statement that this type of act is not to be accepted in society um, but there are infinite amount of ways killings can happen um, the the scale is reflected on the sentencing uh, many people you know a prov provocation kind of has a, a broken down to a Trini Slan can say, well, she looked for that, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And um, although we think laws are above us, laws kind of meet the common man's view of it. Mm -hmm. This man did not go unpunished. He spent four years in jail. Was that sufficient? Uh, it wasn't for me to say, but based on the case law, because of the provocation so severe. But some of the other cases will probably shock uh, when you come to the amount of time served. Yeah, and, 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 as, as, and as we are on that discussion, let's, yes. let's speak to another matter that you would have, um, you would have uh, yes. the well, defense in, counsel on uh, in terms of the state and uh, it's, it's Vishnu Sharma. Sharma. Yes, it's in 2012. Um, he was convicted, he was charged for the murder of his ex-wife, ex-girlfriend, um, and he had killed her by about 15 chop you know, uh, cutlass, it was terrible. Uh, one of the police officers say that her face was spliced off. Um, it was situations, uh, he had to go through a full trial, although we requested a plea to manslaughter, the, 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 the DPP rejected it. We went to full trial. The jury found him not guilty of murder, guilty of manslaughter on the basis of provocation. So let's discuss in terms of the facts. I know that she, um, it, it was a matter of um, alleged infidelity. Yes. That would of course an act, but, but if we can just, uh, for, for our um, viewers and listeners, uh, benefit in terms of how, how it led to, 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 to that act. Yes, yeah, sure. Um, if I allow to read, the prisoner and the deceased had been lovers from some time in 2000, uh, when he returned to Trinidad, uh, they entered into a relationship uh, about three years and um, sometime within the relationship it ended and it appeared that she moved on uh, in his mind he would consider that they were still together um, he gave evidence that she said many things to him I mean this is coming from him uh, she is dead she cannot refute it uh, but the jury accepted had to accept some of these things uh, he's considered that the, during the three years the deceased had been disrespectful, insulted him, physical abuse, assaulted him, open engaged in infidelity, um, the, you know, uh, insulted his manhood, uh, say you're just a mattress, you're here just to provide a place, this, don't tell me what to do, um, all, all these things. And, 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 more, yes. and more, more, more striking is that um, in, in his case, 
uh, he would have indicated that he was in love with your deceased. Yes. Obsessed in love, as, yes. to, well, as um, you put it. And, um, and well, as you said, she used physical violence on him yes. on many occasions. Yes. Were there any witnesses um, to support uh, your, Mr. Sharma's, um, Mr. No. Mr. Sharma's no. case? No, uh, there was no witnesses. I mean, he, it, it, you know, the things about, it's between often partners. So it's going to be two people. When pe two people quarrel, they tend to try to do it in the privacy, away from people. So she being deceased, he being alive, it was only his word. Mm -hmm. um, but he had to give evidence, sworn evidence, subject to rigorous cross-examination by the state. And the, the, um, the jury accepted his. That is how we find facts. We take it from evidence and we let the fact finder tell us what the facts are. They accepted that he was suffered for uh, emotional and psychological abuse to the point that it caused his loss of self-control. So, so was this so was this a spur of the moment situation as opposed to he, to the previous man? Uh, um, well, he he gave evidence that it was a spur of the moment. He went to her house um, and she left the bedroom, she went to the kitchen, and she pulled a cutlass on him. This is according to him. Right. But of course, the jury accepted it. We have to treat it as facts. Um, and then as they're talking, she starts to uh, tell him more of this stuff. And um, he said it all came back to him. He say what we call the last straw, or the breaking point. Um, you can have cumulative provocation that, yes, the last straw might be, let's say someone keeps hitting you on your sensitive point and 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 over uh, a while it builds up and they just have to mention it you know in this case it was um it was uh, another lover called marvin so the marvin thing comes in again and according to him mm. he said uh it drew him crazy he could not recall how he lost his self-control and when he looked down he saw her with cuts on his face and he ran off Obviously, um, they said there were 10 chop wounds to various parts of the body of the deceased, three to the face and head, others to the hand, the back, the lower limbs. Um, one witness described her face as spliced off. An essence of provocation is a loss of self-control, uh, often exhibited by a frenzied attack. Um, Self-defense, they say, you know, a man should not have to wait a nicety, the exact measure of defensive action when being attacked. No. But when, and it is how it developed, because provocation developed when um, you may have acted in excessive self-defense. So we're not giving you the entire not guilty. Yeah. Um, it first developed, you could only rely on provocation when there were physical acts done towards you. So almost like, you know, a man's going to slap me. He didn't slap me. It's not self-defense because, you know, self-defense is fear of death. And I'm provoked to attack him. Later on, understanding human psychology that, you know, you can lose your self-control uh, in reaction to physical acts like fear, or you can lose it on your emotional reaction like words. So the law developed it includes words as well. And then in the words now is where it gets murky. Yeah. Because we as a citizens, we want law that control people's emotions. We can't be giving them a, too much of a blight for losing their self-control. But, but then, but then um, how do you distinguish jealous rage yes. uh, from, from just losing a self-control? Because one can state that, well, uh, based, on, based on her infidelity, yes. Uh, Obviously, I, I was envious, or rather, not even infidelity. You, uh, End of a relationship. Let's say, for instance, yes, the relationship ended, you became jealous because she is with other people, um, and then in a fit of rage, he, he murdered her. That, that can't be provocation. Mm -hmm. Well, it, it is, you are entitled to rely on provocation and whether the jury accepts it or not. Right. Uh, you know, uh, in this case, it, it was, it could be a bit of jealousy, but. Uh, in England, they changed the law in 2009 to loss of self-control, specifically mentioning infidelity cannot be relied on as a ground for provocation. Because they want, because we understand the human nature of romance and relationships, and, and uh, I, I don't want to say Caribbean men are any different or Caribbean people are any different, right? People are emotionally attached to the people that they are in relationships with, they love. And that is why, you know, loss of self-control. But the loss of self-control 
You cannot control yourself. You have lost it. And therefore, we're going to give you the partial defense. But I think it is time that we catch up to the English law and say, look, the Hornet thing is not sufficient for you to lose your self-control and get provocation. And I think that is where the law will be heading eventually um, when we get to the 2023 case. Obviously, in, in our jurisprudence, I think it's a Caribbean thing. Um, it's quite, quite popular, Yes, if, if that's the correct term in terms of in terms of, of, of honing or yes. as we say local plans or yes. being or being um, promiscuous and stuff. It's it's quite it's quite uh, uh, common here. Yes. And um and therefore if every man or every woman uh, is to plead that partial self defence of provocation based on infidelity, then many persons will feel as though they can commit an act, uh, spend a few years in prison and then return to society and integrate normal. Yes, and um, it, it's a frequency we read about it in the papers. If you do a little research now, uh, I don't want to call a bunch of Caribbean names, but it happens in Guyana, it happens in Trinidad, it happens in the smaller islands, it happens all through the Caribbean. I mean, I was shocked at how many cases. It happened in Hong Kong. There's some case where a man, uh, the case I relied on in the 23 Sean Marslin case, uh, about 80 stab wounds to his lover, you know, and it's all this. Mm. Um, it's time for reform of the law because you want to make a concession to human frailty, but you don't want to excuse this kind of things. Yeah. Infidelity, end of rela romantic relationships, people moving on, promiscuity, all these things are part of human nature, you know, and as a human, you have to control your emotions because the complaint with the law and provocation, it is gender biased. It, 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 it often rewards the quick anger that men can get into and, and doesn't recognize the woman's slow burn. Like the case of LC. <laughs> yeah, she, like how you say slow burn. The, yeah, the, 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 the slow tolerance burn. level is, 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 right. is quite, it's quite large. It's, it's, for instance, if, if, if a woman is to be cheated on, she may take a while before. She, she actually excludes, she doesn't but respond. if a man is cheated on, that, yeah, you know, exclude you know, in, in yeah, no time. Yeah, a, a, day, a day for him to hold it in might be too much. Yeah. Um, and it is wrong for us to, I mean, that is a pair, I mean, what are we going to say? We want to guide human nature, yes. or we want to accept human nature. And no matter what, anger management is important, and men, I mean, I'm not saying women don't lose their temper, right? But I mean, we're seeing it in the papers on the frequency and intimate um, partner violence. Men often lose their self-control being the physical stronger and they often are killing their uh, ex-partners and in a sad, uh, well, the whole situation is sad. Loss of life is sad, but you know, the murder-suicide is too common. Yes. It is too common. The, 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 you, we make jokes about you get horn, you drink gramazone, mm -hmm. murder it, it is I mean, too and, common. And it is in our, it's in our songs as well. Yes, our, yes. And sometimes, you know, that, it, that can have a... To me, that's probative to coerce people. It, it, some of them music, remember, those are influence. Yeah. Um, the constant recording or the constant playing of those type of violent or those type, well, those type of tunes that mm. promotes an agenda, mm -hmm. um, that plays with the psychology yeah. of, of one's mind. And, and it would be very interesting for us to even have a, a, a let's say a sociologist or rather a psychologist mm -hmm. um, to deal with the influence of music and crime. Yes. You know, yeah. um, seeing that that is a big thing. Obviously, I, I know I segue, I don't want to segue too much in that no, aspect, I, but I think I all think those things are integrated enough yes. right, to understand the human mind, to understand uh, what causes certain reactions, etc. cetera, that, 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 is, that, that intertwines with criminality. Well, the, the, the music, I mean, we have many horn and songs, you know? Yes. And I think- I, And I we enjoy it, and we sing it, and well, we party, okay. if I get horn. Okay. Uh, what, um, uh, what, a what, horn is a horn, if you take, take it, it on, on, right? Starting but from shadow, a, yes. straight up to, you yes. know, and, and yeah. it's fun, you know, and it's whatever, know where you know. You're looking for horn. She horn, yeah, yeah. horn yeah. your back, you know, that right. kind of thing. Um, but for, I, those, for those, of course, who are, who are listening or, 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 or viewing from abroad and don't understand the terminology, horn, in our local culture, horn means being um, what being um, uh, cheated, being cheated yeah, on, uh, infidelity, no, in, infidelity. Yeah, that is basically a verb and noun. Uh, but yes. it's a good message. A horn is yes. a horn only if you take it on, you know. Yes. And that is why these these 
these all men, they took all, it all, on. All, all you know? the other way, you know, um, as, 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 as some person says. But but let's 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 um, streamline back into the discussion. Um, I, I know we discussed the two the uh, the, the two cases where the, where the where the self the sorry provocation the provocation self defense partial self defense yes. um, worked in, in their favor yes um, based on the circumstances now let, let's look at the the, the the third case in which well there you, are two court um, of appeal the, matters um, that is Uriah Woods and um, Sean Marcelin. Uh, well, there are three in all. Uriah Woods and Sean Marcelin, uh, along with co-counsel Natai Lutchman, I argued in 2017. In Uriah Woods, uh, the court rejected my argument. A short judgment, uh, 16 pages. I mean, I, I gave them a lot of authorities, but they dealt with me. 16 pages is a short judgment, but yes, well, it is. <laughs> uh -huh, yeah, the Sean Marcelin <laughs> is, is 75 pages. Yes. So now Uriah Woods, uh, uh, it happened in, in Tobago of his ex-wife, um, ex, uh, uh, common law. And um, according to her, she moved on. Um, and one day he went, uh, this is perhaps several months after, six months after, uh, to where she was staying. And he goes in the room and he sees a man on the bed um, in his head. He thinks he's still in a relationship. Mm -hmm. He has uh, children with this woman. And um, he gets in a fit of rage and he starts to chop. The man runs off and his own son, the accused own son in the room, uh, in a fit of rage, he chops off his own son's foot and he kills uh, the woman. Uh, he goes through a full trial. He's convicted of murder. Wow. Uh, they reject the partial defense of provocation. And um, Six years old at the time that son was. Yes. Yes, six years old. Yes. Um, he is charged for uh, attempted murder of the son or wounding of the son as well. Um, yeah. but, so he's convicted of murder. He, 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 he relies on the partial um, defense of provocation and they reject it. They reject it because you know, it's, it, he's going into another person's place. They, the jury reject it. Either they don't believe him or if they believe him, they don't think it's enough for provocation. Uh, but the judge had made a comment on the law of provocation, which we complained that the Court of Appeal was wrong. The Court of Appeal didn't agree with us. Uh, fast forward six years later, they agreed with us. And it said, um, was it reasonable to lose his self-control? Uh, but as the law developed, it, one, uh, did he act reasonably after he lost his self-control, is, is what um, the judge said. You don't act reasonably after you lose your self-control. It's contradictory. If you lose your self-control, naturally your actions are after unreasonable. One cannot justify this kind of thing. Um, so the Court of Appeal rejected these submissions, uh, said we were trying to change the law, uh, dealt with it in quick grip, 16 pages is short, and um, he remains convicted of murder on a... Um, but, but, but it's not only a matter of um, pleading the, the, the defense of, of well, provocation based on infidelity or whatever it is that yes. in his mind, but what is striking is that the reason why the deceased um, uh, left the relationship was because she suffered, um, based on the evidence, she suffered the years of domestic abuse. Yes. At the hands of, of, of the, of the prisoner. And the, the yes. prisoner. Yes. Uh, so therefore, if there's evidence to suggest that that there, there has been a years pattern. of abuse, a pattern, um, do you think in your mind as his criminal, as his defense attorney, that you would have succeeded? Um, no. It, the, this specific case, the provocation was a difficult um, partial defense to put. Um, but I, I can say it's often when people run provocation, the jury don't accept it. So the law is one thing, but when jury apply law and facts, if they did something called jury nullification, which is why uh, uh, Mr. Israel Khan and myself are so supportive of the jury that we believe they are more common sense than the lawyers and the judges. The jury can be explained the law in an understandable way they understand it, accept that there is law. But if the law doesn't conform to what the common man law thinks is just, even if he was entitled, Uriah was entitled to provocation, the jury is going to say, nope, that is a man, we're not giving him an excuse, convicted of murder. Um, we took an extremely technical point on the, on the uh, appeal. It was rejected. Uh, I argued it at the same time as another case called Sean Marcelin, which I will get into after. And um, he remains on death row, convicted of murder, um, serving a current um, death okay, sentence. So he was, um, uh 
And, and when, when, what year was he convicted? Uh, he was convicted, I believe, in 2005, and the appeal might have come up in, uh, no, 2015, the murder, 2005, and the appeal come up two years later, 2017. So, so he's so, in so, jail so, about 20 years now. So, so therefore it means that, I mean, based on the evolution of the law, I can't yes. recall it, the case at the moment, and mm -hmm. you could assist me as the experience of um, one. Uh, in terms of after one spends a specific five. number of time, five years in mm -hmm. prison, then one can apply. Well, uh, automatically, um, they, they, they are now placed in life. The yes. sentence has been, yes. it is now classified as the life yes. imprisonment. Yes. Also. yes, after Pratt and Morgan, which Pratt I think is Morgan, mid, yes. mid 90s, they said a uh, delayed wait on death row um, uh, is unconstitutional, and if it hasn't, you haven't. Um, hang the man in five years, you can't do it anymore. Right, so, so um, therefore, so what, where that leaves him in terms of even applying what, for bail? Yeah, uh, no, he would be a convicted man. Bail really is, yes. Oh, yes, yes. bail is red. Uh, but so he is awaiting an appeal in the Privy Council. Um, I, I don't know when that happened, maybe a year, two years in the future. He will know his fate. Um, but since... Are you the attorney on record for that appeal? Uh, no, I was okay. the attorney on record in the Court of Appeal. Court of appeal yeah. um, I argued that that case, Uriah Woods, and Sean Marcelin at the same time. Now, Sean Marcelin was, for many, for several reasons, only decided six years later in 2023. Uh, a little, uh, little victory in the sense that they said when they were wrong in Uriah Woods, the Court of Appeal came and said six years earlier we were wrong in Uriah Woods. Mr. Khan had a point when he was arguing this reasonless of action. Uh, I, I remember being uh, disappointed. You know, you put your, 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 and I've been, this is a topic since 2006, good 15 years I'm reading this. And I went home and I, I kept on researching. I found myself on a Hong Kong website, you know, not no nice term search. I'm just reading all these character things. Mm -hmm. And I see a judgment decided in 2022 exactly what I want to argue. And I submitted to the Court of Appeal. The Court of Appeal um, calls us back and really looks at it and delivers a 75-page judgment, you know? Yeah, now, no, no, we're speaking all these facts, but in terms of understanding, at least the, the, the viewers understanding what exactly we are discussing at the moment. Yes. Um, I, 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 in terms of the Sean Marcelin case, as you said, this is a big matter. This, is, um, this was the state versus Sean yes. Marcelin. Um, but but let's get in in, in terms of the, the, the facts. Uh, well, in this matter that would have led to the privy, well not the privy council, but the court, the court of appeal, uh, stating that well, they were wrong in their previous decisions a couple of years before. Well, in two thousand and three, Sean Marcelin, um, he killed his ex uh, in a public stand in um, New Grant. Uh, they were they were well, she was there. And he would, they both travel in the same area. And um, he approaches her and starts to say, you put me in court maintenance and this and that. And you, you, you said that I'm not paying maintenance. You're trying to get me lock up. And you know, that's a heated topic, you know? And um, yes. she goes in the maxi, he follows her and he stabs her uh, uh, 20 times in a public maxi, a large, you know, not mm -hmm. a, 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 um, a sedan a large maxi taxi, pulls her out and stabs her more in a public place another 20 times. Um, he's later convicted. The offense is August 4th, 2003. He's later convicted uh, um, after a full trial. Convicted of, ma of murder. Uh, he gave evidence and the jury rejected um, his, his plea as partial defense of provocation. Um, he ca he's much like Uriah Woods, mm -hmm. much like Vishnu Sharma. Um, and much like Ramesh Surnarine, they all say, I do not know what got over me. I cannot remember acting, but I must have, you know. Um, he attempts to commit, his, com uh, commit suicide after that is Sean Marcelin. But, 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 what, I, but what, what I want to note particularly, and yes. I, would, I, would, I would read in terms of the day in question of the killing, sure. um, particularly to, 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 to advance whether or not really actually provocation is necessary here. Now, now According to the facts, um, as continuing in, in the judgment, which of course these, these names are public, um, th these are all public knowledge, public cases that can be found on the judiciary website, etc. Um, so therefore, there's no 
need or, or, or concern in terms of disclosing the parties, okay? Uh, but particularly on August 2nd, 2003, a taxi driver was plying his maxi taxi for hire in New Grant. And around 6.40 p.m., while parked at a maxi taxi stand, the deceased entered and sat in the seat directly behind the driver's seat. The appellant, because obviously he appealed yes. his decision, so that's the prisoner, I would say, entered and the deceased said, oh God, I tell you, don't follow me here. The prisoner asked the deceased if she had made an application to the court for maintenance order against him. The appellant asked her, meaning the, the prisoner, this question three times. And the third time, the deceased said, yes, I have you in court for maintenance. And the appellant asked her, why you have me in court for maintenance? You know when I work, I just mind my children and them. Now I am not working, I can't mind them. Why do that for? And the deceased replied, no. The appellant again asked whether the deceased made an application for maintenance against him, and she said no, all right? There was a moment of silence that lasted approximately 15 seconds, and then the maxi taxi began shaking. The maxi taxi driver exited the maxi taxi and looked through the window and saw the prisoner stabbing the deceased with a knife. The blade was approximately three quarters of an inch in width, and the maxi taxi driver told the prisoner to leave the deceased alone, but he continued to stab her. By that time, the maxi taxi driver contacted the Prince, well, the Prince of Stone police station and reported the incident. And after making the phone call, he observed that the prisoner and the deceased were outside of the maxi taxi. The prisoner dragged her to the back of the maxi taxi and continued stabbing. Then he left the scene. And it's only upon uh, arriving at the, uh, the facility, um, actually, no, she was, a, she was pronounced dead at yes, the scene. Yes, I believe so, yes. Right? Um, so, 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 so these, these, are, these are some gruesome, gruesome. gruesome acts. And um, in terms of explaining the legalities of, of why he used provocation, and he used provocation um, because, well, in his mind, she provoked him based on the fact that she applied for maintenance. But uh, well, at the end of the day, he followed her in yes, as well. Yes. So whether that's what's premeditated, yes. um, that is something that I would like you to explain. Well, at the trial, um, the state prosecutor obviously said it was premeditated. You had a knife in your possession. You followed the person there. This wasn't a happenstance meeting. You were the aggressor. She asked you to go away. And the jury rejected his, um, his partial defense. He gave evidence to jury say either we don't believe that happened or we don't believe that version of what you're trying to say. It sounds like you went there to kill her. Mm -hmm. um, so he's convicted of murder. Mm -hmm. um, now, when you look at an appeal, one must look at the judge's directions and see if they were correct. Now, the facts could be 100% um, pointing to the murder, but if the judge gave wrong directions, which the Court of Appeal found that he did, um, on a, on a very particular point. Um, the trial would be, con or the conviction would be considered unsafe. Right. Um, and in this case, they substituted uh, manslaughter for murder based on the error of the judge. The judge was the same judge in Uriah Woods. Uh, the, the also, the judge in the lower courts would have- Give a wrong direction. A wrong yes. direction of manslaughter. On the provocation. Okay. Uh, it's a developing law. Remember, we rely on the precedents and of the apex course. courts to interpret us. The judge, the re what he said is, do you think a reaction like that was reasonable? Mm -hmm. But the circularity of it is that once there's loss of self-control, all actions after are unreasonable. Mm -hmm. So it's all, it, it, the court said he had um, denied the accused a realistic chance to get uh, the partial defensive provocation. Um, and that is why the Quashi conviction, they replaced manslaughter, they resentenced it to, they sent it to the judge to resentence. Um, I can't say how many years he will get, it's pending. Oh, so this, this appeal. This is the sentence. Okay, so the appeal would have been squashed. Yes. Um, and it, it has gone back to the trial judge. To and give at a this sentence. point in time, the trial judge has not. No. Um, no. Well, it has not been. Uh, completed. completed. Uh, it, 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 the offense is 2003, uh, so he's in custody perhaps 20, 21 years. Uh, when 20, so, 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 therefore, so therefore the court, what I mean, I think if now the court has to consider sentencing for murder, yes. I mean, at the end of the day, I believe it's no, no brainer because there's no range of sentencing. I well, mean, you, you commit. Um, in, in terms of that regard, whether or not 
um, the, the, the courts can commit someone for to hang, consider any time spent, or whether or not the court in its, in its decision has to cite particular authorities yes. to state that, okay, this prisoner will now serve life in prison. Is that, yes. is that correct? Uh, well, yes. So he's, he's, he has a conviction of manslaughter. Manslaughter carries a maximum of life. We can see from the Rami Sunarine decided in 2006, he technically got four years for his um, the killing based on provocation. Mm -hmm. And the one for um, Vishnu Sharma, I didn't say the sentence, but uh, the judge found a starting point of 15 years because he had always uh, shown he wanted to plead guilty. He gave him a one-third discount, taking it to 10. And then he had been in custody for about eight years. So he eventually, he only served two more. So that is, that is four years, that is 15. Uriah Woods wasn't given a sentence. Um, Sean Marcelin remains unsentenced, but I can tell you what happened in Anand Babulal, which is the um, third appeal I had done about it. When the Court of Appeal held, uh, upheld Sean Marcelin's um, submissions, yeah. I had also made it in Anand Babulal, and the state conceded, and they replaced manslaughter. Um, Anand Babulal is a case, it, it caused me some trouble. Um, the trouble comes from the sentences. Because I think the law of provocation needs reform, it would flow into the sentences that need reform as well. Because it would shock you, I would read, um, there's sure. no written judgment, I'd only have to read from a sure. news article. Um, I'm going to read the April 2017 when he was convicted. Tears flowed from Anand Babala's eyes after he was told that he would suffer death by hanging from the murder of a mother and her baby in Mayara 12 years ago. 12 years ago would make it 2005. The death sentence was read twice to Babulal. Babulal was convicted of killing um, a woman, 26, and her 18-month-old son, Ishmael Timothy Ragbir, in 2005. The deceased bodies were found in a pit of latrine at her home in 2005. There were stab wounds to her chest and her abdomen. And um, there's a current case uh, in the public domain where, you know, a, a child's head was cut off. Yes. And I did think about Anand Babalal's case. Um, in the appeal, um, this is 23 now. A man from Ayaro, well, this is the same Anand Babalal, uh, will be released from prison in a little over seven years. Anand Babalal was convicted of double murder in 2016, but last year, Court of Appeal upheld his appeal and substituted convictions for the lesser offense of manslaughter. In sentencing Babalal this morning, the Court of Appeal began with a starting sentence of 25 years before ducting the time that he already spent in prison. Babalal was charged for murdering 26-year-old girlfriend and her son, Timothy, in August 2005. That is his, her son? Or her his son, not his son. Um, uh, her body was found in a latch at her home while her son's body was found wrapped in a fishing net in the river. Uh, they had both been stabbed multiple times. During his trial, prosecutors relied on a confession statement in which Babalal admitted he stabbed Ramlochan and his son after she attacked him with a knife. Uh, he had relied on some kind of self-defense or provocation, which was rejected, convicted of murder. But here we have a double murder. The reason but, but, why... Uh, yes, yeah. sorry. No, no, you go ahead, because I'm interested to, to find... And I'm sure the reason is. why I have the difficulty with Anand Babalal's case, although it is my submissions, the court of appeal accepted. When we look at loss of self-control and provocation, and it would come to the... the, the but did you explain... Sorry, before you go there, did yes. you explain any facts in terms of what happened? Well, uh, the, the facts really... Uh, what led him to, 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 to that act? Um... It, 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 it appears some sort of mental illness or something like that. You know, although it, it, the court relied on provocation, you know, the diminished responsibility is a difficult um, defense. It's also a partial defense. Mm -hmm. Drops it from murder to manslaughter. Um, I can't really explain why he did what he did. Uh, he didn't really have that level of um, evidence as the other accused had. Okay. Um, you know, and I'm not taking instructions from him. I'm going at what happened at the trial. Um, but then, it appears then why to be something to like that. It, it was reduced for the same reason that uh, the judge asked the jury to examine the reasonableness of the reaction. Not the reasonableness of the loss of skin. Once you but, reasonable, but reasonableness of okay. the reaction to what? And this is what, this, yes. this, is, where, sorry, yes. this is where I'm going at in terms of, um, if, if, if you're saying that there was a mental illness or yes. some diminished responsibility, then um, of course with 
what, what led to what are the, the provocative yes. acts that would cause him to lose his self control? Well, he relied on um, and she attacked him, and then also okay. a number of relationship issues. Not, not that was the that was basically the, the like time the breaking. of the yes the, the time of the offense. Yes, yes, yes. So a build up, a slow burn. Um, uh, cumulative provocation, relationship issues, nothing that m people in relationships haven't suffered, but building up to the point. Um, and, you know, it's a, it's a difficult topic because we shouldn't give excuses to things that happen to everyone, you know, and relationship issues. So the Anal Babla case causes me difficulty, although we're on a strict application of law. No, normally what happens, law develops, so Sean Marshlin was decided, and then they realize, well, you know, provocation is some problems. It applied to Anna and Babalal, it applied to another case, they applied Sean Marshlin about three times and quashed three convictions of murders, uh, and uh, it's, it, it's probably heading to the Privy Council maybe in a year, two years, uh, with about maybe four different cases on the issue of provocation. I read this morning, um, Chief Justice and a two-member panel, three members, had dismissed an appeal on provocation. Um, so it has to be clarified. I think it needs to be scrapped entirely. I think we should adopt the UK position of loss of self-control. And therefore, in order for it to be scrapped entirely, it means that the legislation Legislation. Has to be, because um, in agreed. Sean Marcelin, uh, I remember when, I, uh, when we argued, Ms. Natai Lutchman and, and in Uriah was in 2017, now retired, Justice Narayan said, well, you're trying to change the law. And this is not, this you have, to, that has to be done by legislation. In Sean Marslin, they took the 75 pages, they set out the areas where they think could deal with some legislative reform. The criminal bar has written to the AG, included this. This case is, I mean, relatively new, June 20, 2023. Um, I have looked at the issue of, of domestic violence, intimate part of violence, and all this, and this is connected, and I've been reading a lot, uh, you know, even the case of LC, and it needs reform. It could come as a proper package, and, but most importantly, the part we should adopt is that infidelity cannot be relied on as a ground for provocation. Mm -hmm. Because we, you know, I don't want to say we all get horned, but a horn is, a, is only if you take it on. Men need easier to... Said. Yes, easier said than done. Easier said than yeah. done, but mm. it, it, it is... It, the I level... Mean, it's, it's either you, you, you move on, or you seek counseling. Yes. Um, but it is very, it is very difficult as it's a human very difficult. to ac accept. Yes. But it is not... I, I don't believe that it is justifiable to use that as a, as a defense yes. um, to murder. Correct. I mean, taking someone's life yes. is, is, is totally extreme as opposed to the offense or rather the act of, 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 of infidelity. Yes, you know, I one agree. One has to weigh what is reasonable. I agree. And that's why obviously a lot of our uh, listeners, of our viewers' listeners um, would wonder or would, would be questioning in terms of whether the law is, whether, <laughs> whether the law is really fair. No, the law, the law is, oh, no. Right, the, and, and this is why a lot of persons have issues with the justice system. Yes. Um, more particularly, where you have a lot of common law practices that has not been evolved by virtue of statute. Yes. And, um, but then how do we make representations to the Law Review Commission, or rather to the, um, to the, to the government in terms of yes. With the criminal bar. The criminal bar has uh, quoted the appropriate sections where mm -hmm. the judges have mentioned, well, we, are, we interpret law. What you're asking, Mr. Khan, we kind of agree with you. We don't want to say we agree because, you know, separation of powers addressed it to the AG. So uh, a week after, we sent it to the AG. Uh, we'll send it to the law reform. We believe uh, on another topic that murders need to be categorized, you know, and uh, the case of LC is one. Wife killings, spousal killings, all need uh, the unique um, reform, and it can't be done by judgment law. It has to be done by the legislator, and we're hoping to push it in its direction. Um, uh, these cases and the public outcry highlight that. Um, so it, it, it's time for reform. A loss of self-control will always be here, but it should never be. Well, well we've been here for we we hear about reform, reform, reform. Reform is is a very common word. Um, but it, it sometimes it's, it's just bandied about, and um, and there's so many areas of law. I mean, I mean to be to be fair, 
there are many areas of law that has been evolved over the couple of years as well. Um, I, I, am not, I am not a criminal attorney in terms of criminal practice. I only practice criminal my first year in, in, pri in, mm -hmm. in practice. And um, it's a very interesting um, area of law, um, the reform in terms of, in terms of now having these, the criminal proceeding rules and yes. all these different things. But I believe if we, if we separate from common law and actually create legislation to, um, uh, to, to solve ambiguities or interpretations within the law, um, is, is it that, and, and this is a question I'm going to pose to you, is it that you would see things being progressive? Yes, um, common law is decided case by case. Mm -hmm. And therefore, they say difficult cases make bad law because it's hard to get the justice of the case. So you need an overarching legislation. There could be room for interpretation of the judges to you don't have to cover everything. The case of LC that you, you, you discussed with Mr. Ramke soon, to me, that was a clear case of self-defense. The fact that she had multiple stab wounds on the deceased, to me, does not take it out of self-defense. She probably stabbed till she felt safe. But um, because the law on self-defense requires, uh, you know, you can't be excessive. So the entire... But then, but then who decides excessive? I mean, if you are a person yes. that is in immediate, immediate. Um, fear of, 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 of violence, yeah. and even... Um, not fear of violence, but fear of death. Fear Someone death. said, I'm going to kill you tonight. Yes. Then The case of LC, yeah. I think, is a perfect example to show why we need um, categorizations of murder. There's, not just the, there's too many types of killings. Mm -hmm. So self-defense needs to be ref, uh, set out properly. Loss of self-control. There's all kind of problems with mental health, diminished responsibility, how we treat it. I don't think it could be properly handled by judges. Mr. Khan, Israel Khan, uh, criminal bar, has shown me documents 20 years ago where he submitted saying these have to be categorized. Um, you know, there's legislative agendas. Uh, some of the uh, legislation on the agenda looks very needed. Yes. But this has to be done, and I hope it will be done sometime soon. Agreed. Of Daniel Khan, thank you so, so much. Um, you always bring positivity, and, um, and uh, of course, in your work, uh, congratulations once again. Thank you. Um, of course, you know, and I thank you always for your input um, and, and your advice. You know, so, so, so um, do you want to say anything before we... Before well, again, we... I'm gr grateful for being on the show. Uh, watch most of your, your continuing upwards of 75 episodes going on to 80. These last few ones about partner domestic violence is very important. Um, protecting our women, equalizing um, the playing field. And um, I think shows like this do an excellent way to raise issues. And um, we won't stop here. We're coming mm -hmm. to talk the issue, but we're drafting our suggested legislation reform, and we're working together to make the system a little fairer if we can. And I'm grateful for the opportunity. Indeed. Thank you so much, Mr. Khan, and all the best. So, guys, it has been a wrap. Hope you enjoyed this informative and um, uh, self-thoughtful um, <laughs> episode of Strictly Legal on WASN Content Capital. And before I leave, I'll leave you with this quote, real change. Enduring change happens one step at a time. God bless. Have a good day.